Spartans, virtual fighters, historical figures, fighting queens, and insane collaborations in between. Welcome to the history of the guest characters of Dead or Alive, an all-new offshoot series where we'll be covering most, if not all, of Team Ninja's major collaborations in the Dead or Alive series. Hope you'll enjoy the ride, because there's quite a handful. I'm sure everyone knows about Dead or Alive having a Spartan from the Halo series, a quartet of virtual fighters, and even an iconic queen of fighters that inspired the series' famous jiggle physics. But what if I told you that Team Ninja's collaborations with other companies didn't start with Dead or Alive 4? And what if I told you that this collaboration started off as a region-specific exclusive and wasn't immediately known to the rest of the world? Yes folks, Dead or Alive's first collaboration wasn't with Bungie in the Halo series. It was a claim. Let me explain. When Dead or Alive 2 was released on all major regions on the Dreamcast and PlayStation 2 throughout the year 2000, the European Dreamcast version, released on July 14th of that year, would be in a unique predicament, as it was published in Europe by another video game developer, Acclaim. With the Dreamcast port of their 1999 video game, Shadow Man, being released 10 days after DOA 2 in Europe, Acclaim saw an opportunity to promote Shadow Man through DOA 2, which had proven to be quite popular at the time. Yeah, I know. Who the hell is Shadow Man? To answer that question, we gotta go back to the year 1992, when a comic book publishing company going by one Valiant Comics still existed, and Shadow Man was just one singular word. Some 90s kids may know this company best for making comic book adaptations of popular Nintendo IPs like Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda, and to a lesser extent, Captain N the Game Master, which was infamously known for their bad depictions of video game icons, some being more of a mega train wreckagist than others. Shadow Man, created by Jim Shooter and Steve Englehart, is the alter ego of Jack Boniface. Possessed by the voodoo spirit of Shadow Loa, Boniface is in task to protect Liveside, the world of the living, from another fabric of reality, the world of the dead, called Deadside, which his arch nemesis, the necromancer Master Dark, intends to raise in order to take over New Orleans. Shadow Man's powers and abilities include enhanced strength, endurance, reflexes, night vision, regeneration, the ability to summon the undead, and the ability to open portals to the dead side as well as control most of the creatures there. And if that's not enough, he has the ability of Umbrakinesis, which allows him to manipulate shadows to either use his weapons or move freely through them like Kitty Pride from the X-Men series. Shadow Man's first comic book appearance would be in Exo Man War issue 4, released in May of 1992. That same month, he would get his own series and soon after become a flagship title for Valiant Comics after one year, selling well over 100,000 copies a month. A few years and numerous guest appearances in the Valiant Universe later, Shadow Man would go on to sell 5 million copies during Valiant Comics' run in the comic book industry until the company was eventually purchased by Acclaim in 1996, rebranded as Acclaim Comics. That same year, Shadow Man would undergo a different continuity other than rebrand, with the main focus of adapting the character to video games, retitled with Shadow and Man being separated rather than a single word, and an all-new character, Michael Leroy, taking up the mantle. There's a dog is coming. There's a place beyond your darkest dreams. A realm surpassing even your worst nightmares. It's called Deadside, and only the dead walk there. A world where terror can drive you to madness. A world that carries you beyond even your most dangerous visions. Only one man stands in the gateway between that world and our own. Only he holds the key to the door between live side and dead side. His name, Michael Loire. He wears the ancient mask of shadows in his chest and has been transformed by it. It has given him power, made him into a taker of souls, a voodoo warrior, heir to the mysteries of dead side. He fights alone in the darkness, plunging into the abyss to hunt, traveling into the heart of a nightmare to destroy the most evil souls either world has ever known. He is Shadow Man. In 1997, the first video game adaptation of the new Shadow Man would be announced, originally planned for release in the late half of the following year for Nintendo 64 and Windows PC respectively. Unfortunately, the claim would not meet the release date, 
and both platforms were pushed back to August 31st, 1999 in the US and September 3rd in Europe, alongside the PlayStation version. The US release of the Dreamcast version would be released that winter on December 3rd, 1999, which brings us full circle to the summer's European version, arriving 10 days after Dead or Alive 2, which, as you remember, is being published by Acclaim. At this point, the video game Shadow Man was a critical and commercial success. Now I know what you're thinking. Osmic, are you saying Shadow Man was a guest character in Dead or Alive 2? How come no one talks about it? The answer is simple. He wasn't a guest character. Rather than create an entirely new character out of Shadow Man from scratch, Acclaim opted to leave its mark by getting Zack a costume in the likeness of Mike Leroy's Shadow Man, a costume made exclusively for this version of the game. But they didn't stop there. Tina would also receive a costume in the likeness of Astrid Lockett, who served as Shadow Man's love interest. In a way, this somewhat mirrored the speculated chemistry between Zack and Tina at the time, albeit an unreciprocated one. While Zack's Shadow Man costume would appear in later versions of Dare Life 2 following the European Dreamcast release, Tina's Astra costume would appear in all later versions except for the 2004 Xbox remake, Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate. The most likely reason for this omission was because Acclaim's comics division canceled most of their comic book runs, including Shadow Man, two years prior before filing bankruptcy the same year Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate was released. And since Astrid was a character created from the Acclaim comics continuity, and Shadow Man technically wasn't, it seemed plausible for the costume's removal. But this is only speculation. While Acclaim Comics may have met its demise in the dead side, Shadow Man, now as the original Jack Boniface, and a singular word for the title of character, would see his rebirth when Valiant's IPs were purchased back from the very company that created them, now rebranded as Valiant Entertainment. However, in 2018, DMG would eventually acquire the rights to the company, where Shadow Man would see another relaunch as recent as April of 2021. And this is where Shadow Man's legacy and its history of the Dare Life series stands today. Join us next time as Dare Live's first well-known collaboration, Bungie Jumps, its way to a launch title for one of the most revolutionary video game consoles ever made.